Hey guys, so a few days ago I finally went and saw the movie Dunkirk. Uh, I've been, uh, this past weekend I was very busy. I had my niece and my sister are, were still in town from North Carolina. Um, and they finally just left uh, earlier this week. Uh, so I was spending a lot of time with them. So I didn't get a chance to go see Dunkirk or anything uh, right off the bat because of that. I wanted to spend time with them until they leave, right before they left. And uh, this movie, I was generally really looking forward to, uh, mainly because I'm a big Christopher Nolan fan. Uh, I've loved his movies up to this point. He's a really talented director, uh, in my opinion. Um, you know, movies like Inception and The Dark Knight are, my opinion, or my opinion, his best movies. I, uh, but I, I've enjoyed pretty much most all of his movies up to this point. Some I, I didn't like as much as others, but you know. Uh, and uh, this movie, that's like cool. He's my started getting trailers for us. It looked like a really big, epic World War II movie uh, done by Christopher Nolan. And I was like, yeah, that's going to be awesome. I cannot wait for that shit. And so that, that looks like something that's right up. I, I was kind of interested like seeing him making a World War II movie and see, see how well it was done. And I was reading like the backstory or the real story behind, or uh, the real story of the Battle of Dunkirk or the or what happened over in Dunkirk. And I was like, that sounds like that could be an interesting movie. And, uh, and, uh, I was honestly half expecting, uh, going in that it was going to be like, like four or three hours long, like all of his movies have been lately. And, but this is only like, this is the shortest movie he's made in at play ever. It, it, like, it's under, uh, two hours and it's like an hour and 40 minutes, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, I was really looking forward to this, even though I, I, while well, I uh, was uh, watching my sister, or, you know, visiting with my sister and my niece, I was hearing uh, feedback from people that had been seeing it, saying that uh, it was, it seemed like it was getting a mixed reaction amongst audiences. Uh, some liked it, some didn't like it, some were like in the middle. Uh, and I was like, huh. I was like, I, I kind of was getting a gist of what people were complaining about here and there. And I was like, huh. Uh, I, but I still went in with an open mind because I was like, you know, I, I, sure, there might, you know, people might not like it, but I might end up like being thinking completely different from other people. Who knows? Um, yeah, like, it's been getting really well received by critics too. It's been like getting really damn good reviews by critics. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It is. It's, it's, it's a pretty good movie. 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. Good. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but it's good. It's good. It's fine. It's, it's, it's a really well-made movie. But this movie does have problems. And I'll get into those. I have one big problem with this movie. And it, it's... A problem a lot of people seem to be having with this movie too and I'll, I'll get into that in a second but from a technical standpoint from a directing standpoint from a just a filmmaking standpoint and all and I, like from all ends it's this is a really fucking well-made movie this is a really great movie from a technical standpoint this is like really well done movie uh Christopher Nolan, I don't think this is, should come out as a shock to anybody who's watched any of his movies, knows how to make a movie. <laughs> and this is just another case of like him proving that he's a really good filmmaker. Um, this movie is really beautiful. It's a really great looking movie, like cinematographer, cinematography wise, directing wise. Like both could get an Oscar nomination. I'd be fine with it. Uh, like Nolan, I think this is not one of Nolan's best movies, which makes it kind of frustrating that if he gets his if he gets his first nomination, that it would be for this. But I mean, fuck it, the guy's long overdue for a directing nomination, in my opinion. So why not? But uh, he, uh, it, I mean, this movie is really goddamn like really well done. Also, I recommend people seeing this. 
on the big screen. Uh, really do. Uh, if you do get a chance to see it, it's a it's a movie that I don't fully recommend full for for a full price. Uh, I probably would say a matinee if you get to see it for a cheap matinee or whatever. I recommend seeing it. It's really it's like a really good movie. It's a movie that was made for the big screen. Definitely. It really felt like it. That it was a movie made for the big screen. The sound from the, like the like from the scope of this thing to uh, the sound. Like Jesus Christ is one of the loudest movies I've seen in a long damn time. Jesus was a loud movie. Uh, the sound was great. The the sound effects definitely should get an Oscar nomination to come with sound effects. Uh, I felt like you're like right in the middle of the battles, uh, like at Dunkirk. It was really like it is really well done. Uh, like I said, it, it felt like you're like right in the middle of it, and uh, the music's great. Everything else, like I said, the music is fantastic. The score is fantastic. Like there's a use of like a stopwatch sound throughout the whole movie that plays. That was really cool and effective. Um, uh, this, this a lot of the action sequences are, are are pretty goddamn well done, pretty much all of them actually. It's really like this movie is just one big giant action set piece after one gi- giant action set piece after one after the other after the other after the other. It's just it's nonstop. It's pretty much almost nonstop. It keeps going and going and going and going. Uh, and a lot of them are really intense and really well done and really well made. Um. Which I guess will bring me kind of now into why I didn't love this movie. And because this is kind of now getting into territory of why I didn't love this movie as much as I wanted to. Because I, I really wanted to love this movie as much as much. Get, give this movie a glowing review. And like I said, it's a good movie. I do recommend seeing it. And the, it's a big screen. It's, it's definitely not a terrible movie at all. Not at all. Trust me, it isn't. Um, biggest problem with this movie, and I know I'm not the only one who's pointed this out is that I can't be the only one, and I don't think I am the only one, who could not give a fuck about anybody in this movie. At all. At all. You have a lot of big name actors in this thing that are just there, and that's it. And they're just there, and they're not given really any character development, any char- they're not even really a character in general. They're just recognizable faces in a movie, and that's about it. Uh, like Tom Hardy is a fucking fighter pilot, or is a uh, pilot that is basically helping from above, uh, like uh, them, like all the people trying to get out of Dunkirk. He's trying to help them uh, being able to escape and everything else, while like German planes and French plane or German and um, German and like German and uh, German planes are like basically trying to attack them and everything else, and he's trying to help like save them and everything else like that. And he has very little dialogue to almost none at all. Like he has maybe like two or three lines in this movie, and that's about it. And he spends half the movie with a fucking mask on over his face. It doesn't say any words. And I'm sitting there like, what is up with Tom Hardy nowadays? Where this is not the. This is like the. Maybe third movie in. Or that he's done over the last few years. Where he's. Wearing a mask and has very fucking little dialogue. What is going on with his career? <laughs> like, between Bane and Mad Max. I know Bane, he talked a lot, but barely could fucking understand what he was saying. Uh, there's difference. Um, it's like, what the hell? He's, he's a really good actor and everything else, and there was no point to hit him it being Tom Hardy other than just to have a big name that everybody knows. Um, who else is in this movie? Kenneth Branagh is a uh, commander that's overseeing uh, what's going on in Dun- Dunkirk. Uh, he has a, lot, a, lot, a few lines in there. 
You have uh, I I'm only, I swear to God, Ewan McGregor was one of the fire or was one of the pilots too, wasn't he? In one of the pilots, I swear to God, he was. Um, let me look. And I that 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 also is another problem I have with this movie is that honestly, there are points in this movie that you are kind of like towards the end of the movie where there are characters in peril that you're supposed to be worried about and really give a shit about but i had a lot of i don't know if i was the only one going who the fuck is that i don't remember that character one fucking bit especially when it was not a recognizable person uh that i didn't recognize an actor i didn't recognize and i just kept going who is that why were they in this movie before? I barely remember them. Like that one fucking scene where they're in uh, the boat. They're in that boat, uh, trapped in the boat, and they're getting shot at. Like by with tar first that like what, because somebody's doing target practice, and then they start like opening fire on them, and they're like their boat is sinking and everything else, and uh, wires filling up into this boat, like. A lot of the time, I'm like, who the fuck are all these guys? Like, they're all talking, and I'm like, who are you? Who are you? And at one point, they mentioned a character who uh, I, I recognized because he was a guy who was burying uh, one of his fellow soldiers in the sand. And they talk about how he is a German traitor. He's a German traitor. And I'm like, Wait, was this something I fucking completely missed or something like that? I swear to God, I've been paying attention to this whole movie. I don't remember that ever fucking being brought up. Who the hell? Why, like, I was really fucking confused. Like, and there are times there are just like, like I said, a lot of characters that I had no idea who the hell. Like, I, I, I you could, I, you could have told me that they were just characters that were just introduced, and I would have believed you. I could not. Like, there was no way to differentiate between any of these fucking characters whatsoever like what whatsoever other than like if you they were a big name actor that i've seen in movies before that was the only time i would recognize them like from uh, like you know be able to recognize them that's about it uh like the harry styles kid i can i didn't i know everybody was praising his performance in this movie i barely fucking remember him i don't remember seeing it like i barely remember seeing much of him in it i barely fucking remember what character he was until i had to watch watch the uh or i had to look on wikipedia which character he was i had to think i had to look up his fucking name i couldn't even remember any of the fucking names in this movie um there's like that's the problem with this movie is that there's way too many characters way too fucking many characters i know i get what he was going for which was like you know, they were trying to show, like, a real, like, he was trying to show, like, almost, like, this war in real time, almost, and showed how many, like, it affects so many different people, and I would have just focused on one or two characters, and that's it, and you would have, it would have been a fine film. It would have been fine. You didn't have to focus on 50 of them. It's like... Like, there's the... Uh, the only characters that I kind of started to get a little bit interested in, invested in, but because you barely spent any time with them, I couldn't. Um, were Mark Rylance's character, uh, who's this... Uh, he has this boat, uh, and uh, like this luxury boat... And, uh, like, these two teenagers go, come with him to help him. And they're going to Dunkirk to help try to get soldiers off the island and everything else like that. There are a bunch of civilian boats. They're part of, like, a bunch of civilian boats that are trying to help them. And it, that, that's, like, one of the most interesting parts of the movie. But also, at the same time, like I said, you don't focus on them that much That to the point that, like... I really couldn't give a shit about anybody, like especially a teenage one teenage boy, the young boy, who's like starts going blind. Spoiler alert! Um, at one point, I'm like, eh. And then he also then they bring in Cillian Murphy, who's a guy who uh, like sub basically is sinking into the ocean and he's sitting on top of it. They find him sitting on top of it, I think, and 
they uh they help they, they help him out or they they rescue him and he's got like PTSD and stuff like that. And he almost seems like an interesting character, but you really don't get enough time with him uh, to give a shit about him. Um, that's the problem with this movie is that like, as on paper it sounds great, but I like I've heard somebody say that maybe they should have added more time to this movie. Yeah, that might have been something. That that could have been that could have worked maybe. I, I, this is the first Christopher Nolan movie. I might actually say that maybe a little bit more time given to this movie could have helped. Like the first movie that he didn't fucking make almost three hours needed to be longer. Uh, I never thought I'd say that. Um, that's insane. Uh, or even that I don't know because he still would have way too many characters in this fucking thing. Uh, I know what they were trying to be respectful and show, because there were a lot of people that were on this island. I get it. It's a real story. It's a, I get it. But still, way too many goddamn characters. Like, a, a lot of the great war movies focus on more, not only a couple characters, uh, main characters, and that's it. This movie focuses on 50 of them. That's a problem. <laughs> okay? uh, you can't get invested. Like So when all this crazy shit's going down and all the intense like battle scenes are going down I couldn't give a shit <coughs> really about anybody and that's sad I like I said it's really sad I like I really want to love this movie I still like like I said I still recommend this movie but I don't if you're a person that likes character development and characters and you know an actual movie <laughs> and not just a movie that's great on a technical level. This might not be the movie for you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I I know this movie's a. I, I do recommend seeing it though, like on the big screen. It's a movie that is worth seeing on the big screen, especially in surround sound. Or if you're at home and you have a surround sound system, maybe. Um, yeah, uh, and have an HD TV. But this movie was so good on big screen. I don't recommend, I don't I don't regret seeing it at all. No, I don't regret seeing it at all. Just I was like, man, I wish I was like this movie a lot better. It seems like I'm really neg more negative. I'd see this getting Oscar nominations. I'm fine with that. Best picture? No. Uh, directing? Like I said, on a technical level, it deserves all like the Oscar nominations it should get. Uh, directing or Picture, best picture, acting. What fucking acting would you pick from? I hear Harry Styles, but I barely fucking remember him in this. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, it's it's kind of the weirdest. Kind of recommend, but also kind of don't. Or it's it's really weird. It's it's like I said, this isn't a terrible movie whatsoever. It's a really goddamn well made movie. I will never say that this isn't a well made well made movie. Trust me, it is. Um, yeah, that's as far as Dunkirk. Uh, uh, trailers. What the hell did I get from this? Uh, oh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Uh. Man, I'm going to get so much shit for saying this next statement. I really know I am. There's probably going to be somebody in the comments that are going to rip my head off for saying this, but uh, here it goes. Uh, I'm not that big of a fan of the original Blade Runner. <laughs> Don't kill me. Uh, no, I know. I, 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 it's a movie that I've only seen once, all right? Be fair. I've only seen this movie once, Blade Runner, original Blade Runner, once. It's a beautifully made movie. But I didn't give a shit about any of the rest of the movie. It's a really goddamn stunning movie to watch. Uh, but I still really... I, again, it's one of those movies that I want to go back and watch before this comes out. Because I'm sure this will... You know... It, it, it looks it looks just like... I mean, the style of film... It, it's made by De Dennis Villeneuve. Or the guy who made uh, Sicario, Parent Prisoners, and um, Arrival... And he, like I said, it, it looks like a Blade Runner movie. Um, is that Ryan Gosling and all that stuff? It looks really well done. Um, we'll see. And like I said, we'll see. Um, 
it, it's one of those. Eh. I uh, like I like I said I have to watch the first one again. Maybe my opinion will change over over time if I see it again. Like I said, the first time I saw it, I didn't. I was like, I don't understand why people really go on about this movie. But other than that, it's really well made and really beautifully made. But like I said again, I'm a, I want I, I will watch it again if I before I see this next one. Uh, the Snowman. Uh, this is a. Uh, interesting movie coming out uh the trailer starts out with a girl getting fr- uh, walking outside from her job i think and it's snowing and somebody throws a snowball at her and then murders her she turns around and somebody murders her and decapitates her and puts her head on a snowman i think and michael fassbender is trying to find out who the killer is and it's like huh <laughs> That's a weird. I said it kind of looked kind of fun, and I was like, "All right, it could be kind of a good thriller." Weirdly enough, called the Snowman. Uh, all right, um, we'll see. <laughs> um, an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power. Uh, I never saw the first inconvenient. It's the uh, the sequel to Inconvenient Truth. If you don't know, I never seen the first Inconvenient Truth. Um, I know, like I, I always heard, it was pretty good. But like, I'm a person that's a big, uh, uh, has been a big, uh, strong supporter of like trying to stop this global warming shit or climate change or any of that shit. Um, I don't know if Al Gore is the best spokesperson for it because I know people like the Republicans that are fucking idiots that don't want to that don't want to believe in this shit. Just will not believe in it, especially because Al Gore is the, like, spokesperson for it, but I, like I said, it's it's an important movie uh, that definitely I'm glad there's another one coming out because it's getting a lot fucking worse. Just look outside. I mean, hello, people. Fucking look outside. Look how our weather is. It's not fucking normal. I'm sorry. There are idiots out there that try to tell me all the time it's like, oh, it's not climate change. It's just what happens with nature. Fuck you, it's not. Uh, that's getting, going on a kind of political rant, sorry. And the last one I got was a trailer for this movie called Victoria and Abdul. Um, an Oscar bait movie if I've ever seen one where it's Judy Dench trying to get another Oscar. Uh, where she plays Queen Victoria who takes on a like an Indian servant while she's like she's the empress of India and stuff like that and I'm like wait a minute um doesn't wasn't she also didn't Britain kind of like was kind of terrible to uh India if I remember correctly and that was why um, uh Mahatma Gandhi or Gandhi, you know, took or led a rebellion or whatever. I don't know much about history, British history, but I know kind of Britain has been pretty terrible in India. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I was like, I, I it, like, of the little I know, I'm like, eh, this is, could be a weird little movie. Um, I don't know about it. Uh, it's from the same guy that did um, Philomena and the Queen, so. And Judy Dench was amazing in film. You know, I love that movie. Uh, yeah, that's that's as far as trailers go. Uh, I I I the next couple days I got a couple other reviews I got to do here uh, for which I saw for movies I saw last night. But I don't know if I'll do them right off the bat or do them tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll at least get my Dunkirk review up and running. Uh, on YouTube, uh, but I'll have reviews in the next couple days for Girls Trip and Wish Upon. <laughs> I have a lot to talk about with those two, so until then, I'll talk to you guys later.